Hello everyone and welcome to another video and what is or what was going to be another episode of Terrible Tech Awards. In this mini-series we take a look at what I feel are some of the worst PC components to have ever been released over the last decade or so. We've discussed the pointless Core i5-X series CPUs, slated the DDR4 GT1030 and now it's the turn of the HD6450. We featured it in the previous video as part of the cheapest PC you can build right now system, but quickly discovered that it was being held back by the awful processor. So specifically what we have here is the 1GB GDDR3 version of the 6450. Despite having double the VRAM of the 512MB card, the GDDR5 version would still be faster thanks to, well, the GDDR5 memory. So you could argue that this card isn't terrible because it does serve a purpose at a reasonable price point. This, what is essentially a display adapter or ideal addition to a low power HTPC, doesn't cost an unreasonable amount either, so no one's getting ripped off and the packaging usually makes you aware of what version you're buying. In fact, I'm feeling generous. Let's remove the black mark prematurely bestowed upon this entry level component. It's not terrible, it's just a little bit obsolete. So back in 2011, the HD6450 was essentially an entry level foot in the door to the world of DX11 gaming at 55 US dollars. The justification for this price tag was that it offered better performance than any integrated graphics solution at the time. We've since come a long way and even the super cheap Athlon 3000G's iGPU would outpace this graphics card performance wise. Amazing really. If you bought a Ryzen APU, then again you'd be another step ahead of this card. Coincidentally, those are a couple of examples of what I'd recommend in 2020 for an entry level or HTPC rig. So the 6450 is still being sold new and therefore must still be popular. According to a lot of user reviews I've read, it seems the most popular uses for a 6450 are to power multi-monitor setups or act as the display output for aforementioned media center PCs. Every PC at my school used to have one of these as well, so where exists demand, supply shall be forthcoming. And yes, it can still game. Well, it will start games, at least. Maybe you'll get five frames per second and maybe you'll get 10. Some titles will even run with at least 30 frames per second if you turn the settings down low enough. Thanks to DirectX 11 support, almost every title should at least start. Let me reveal a little secret to you. I am a magician and here is my best trick. Look up. This is how you achieve a smooth frame rate. What's that? You can't play games like this? Amateurs. All right, so next up, I just followed a bunch of low spec gamer tweak videos. I couldn't do much about the Outer Worlds because I have the unmoddable Game Pass version, but I don't think we would have really gained anything here performance wise. We were able to pull a few extra frames from a couple of titles, so there is some hope. Honestly, experimenting with lower than low settings is always fun, and it will work better with slightly more powerful graphics cards but reducing quality a little here and there does help a bit. It's not a gaming card and it's not intended as one, but the 6450 lives on and apparently so does the demand for them. And with that, there we have it. Thank you for joining me as we took a look at the HD 6450 today. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.